In today's video, I want to take a look at generic data types in C. How can we possibly implement generics uh, without actually having access to any sort of object oriented uh, features like in uh, C++? How can you do that here? Well, there's a, there's a really neat uh, thing called the void pointer. And if you didn't see the video yet, you can check it up top uh, to get an introduction of it. Let's try and use that void pointer to create our own generic data types. So first, let's try to create a simple a stack, right? a simple stack that can store any type of data. How do we do that? Well, first things first, let's define our stack here, type def struct um, stack <coughs> and stack here as well. Well, the first thing I guess that a stack should have is a size, right? So when you, for example, when you first instantiate that a stack, it should have a sort of a size and that size should be stored somewhere. Like let's say a hundred elements. That's how many the stack can store. So I could say here int size, but that's not quite right. I've started using actually size T as the type. So size T here is very well uh, fit for this situation. If you, again, if you haven't seen the video on size T, I've made one recently that explains what size T is, but for all tensor purposes, it's just an unsigned long, long in here. And you can, well, it, it represents the size of something. In our case, the size of our stack. Next, we have the, the actual data, right? So we have the data, which should be, as I said, a void pointer. So I'm gonna say here, void pointer data, right? And uh, one more thing I want, well, I want the top, right? Since it's a stack, I kind of want a reference to the top element. And we can have a, another void pointer that says top here. And, uh, well, something's missing from all this. This is nice, but we kind of have to know what data type we're working with. Okay, how do we do that? Well, we can use a simple enum. I made a video on enumerations, which you can check again up top. Uh, this is this is a simple enumeration that I'm gonna create here. So type def enum, and I'm gonna call it a data type but it can be called maybe struct or stack data type or something more specific if you want to have multiple enumerations of such uh, nature. But really the namings of these values actually matter a lot. Um, so here I'm actually gonna call it, for example, stack underscore int, right? For a stack of integers. And then stack underscore, let's say char, if you want a, a stack of characters, or let's say stack underscore u int, 64. That's basically a 64 bit unsigned integral. Okay, and let's say we want to implement for all these three. Well, this is nice, but we also need to store this data type in our structs. So I'm going to copy and paste this here data type, call it type. Okay, very nice. And but next, how do we actually use this struct? Because it's kind of difficult to wrap around how you would initialize such a thing. Well, the, the nice part about C is that you can create functions that do that for you automatically so you don't have to do it every single time try to use a stack. So you can create here a simple function that returns a stack and I'm gonna call it, I would call it create stack because in English language that sounds better, but when working with, when you're actually having functions that rely on certain types to be there uh, or that are specific to a certain structure, data type, whatever, uh, I would start the name with the stack. So I'm gonna say stack create. And if you have other functions that work with the same stack, you would have stack insert, stack pop. And you would automatically uh, get a list of all of the function names when you type in stack in your editor, usually. Cool, so I have stack create. And this guy, well, what, what should it take? Um, we're creating an empty stack with no data. So I'm gonna say first size t. So I want size t, uh, the size of our stack. I want to know the number of elements. And I also want to know the data type. So the type of elements we're gonna be storing. Data type, type. And that's it really. With all this information, we can actually initialize our stack. So you can say here, stack s equals, I'm gonna use this type of initialization where I just kind of use the dot uh, here and type in the type. So basically this will initialize the type 
uh, value from our struct here. So dot type equals, I'm gonna give it a value, which is gonna be our type, of course. Then we have the size, so dot size equals our size. Then we have our uh, data. So our data is actually gonna be a bit more tricky because, well, how we're gonna store this? Well, we're gonna have to store it dynamically. So I'm gonna have to have a call to either malloc or calloc. It doesn't really matter right now. I'm just gonna use malloc because why not? And here we have to pass in the size of the whole array. What's the size of that? Well, that really depends on this data type, right? If we pass in here a char, let's say the size is 10, then we just need to store 10 bytes, that's fine. But if we have here a 64-bit uh, unsigned integer, that's eight bytes each, and we have 10 uh, elements, so that's 80 bytes. So that's different. We're gonna have to calculate the size somewhere. So I'm gonna actually start here saying effective size, and that's gonna be equal to, we're gonna instantiate it with zero, but what I'm gonna have here is just either a switch you could have or an just if else chain. I'm gonna use an if else chain because it's just, uh, I don't know, it just looks better. Um, so if the type is, well, our char, then I want, let me see here, I want it to be the effective size, I want it to be equal to the size, so the size of our stack times the number, uh, times the size of one element. So since we know that this is a char, we have to type in here the size of char, which it's usually just one byte. Next, we just do the same for every single type in here. Just like so. So we have here uh, size of char times size, size of int times size, and size of unsigned long long, right? That's a 64 bit because it's long long and it is unsigned. Okay, now that we have all that, we have this effective size in bytes that we can pass simply to malloc. Okay, so that's that's nice and all. And notice I use again size t here because really malloc, as you can see at the tooltip here, malloc expects a size t type. So to not create any confusion, we're just gonna give it a size t type. And lastly, of course, I want to instantiate the top. So the top is going to be equal to null, signifying we don't have any data on it. We don't have anything and it's null. Nice. Now we can call this function. So create stack or stack create and say stack create of, I want to get 10 elements in our stack and I want a stack of uh, just simple integers. Why not? And if I store it somewhere as equals that, and if I want to add elements to it, well, we can, we can actually do that. We can say s dot data. Well, s dot data is a what? It's a void pointer. So what do you do with void pointers? Always when you try to read data from them or write the data into them, you have to cast them to some data type, always. Right? Uh, and this is a good thing because we don't want to just dereference it for no reason without actually casting it. Okay, so here we're gonna have to say uh, s.data cast it to an int pointer, right? Because we know it is an int pointer because this guy is a stack of integers, so it has to be an int pointer. And then well, the first element of zero, let's say I'm gonna make it equal to 64. Okay, and next up, let's modify the top variable. So the top, the top value should be changed, it shouldn't be null, should be the the, the element we just added, right? So we're gonna say s dot top equals s dot data plus zero. But notice here, I cannot just do that because uh, you cannot add to a void pointer a number. You have to first cast it again. So I'm gonna have to cast it to an int pointer like that. Now this is valid. Okay, and let's say I want to add another one. So I can just really copy and paste this. You can even make a function out of this if you wanted to. Let's say I want to add the number 128 and I want to have it one here, s dot top plus one. And that's really all there is to it. So I hope you're still with me. What we did was create this stack create function, right? That just calculates the size, then creates a stack and actually forgot to return this. So I'm gonna have to return this stack here inside our function. And once that's 
created, we can use it in our main. Notice I'm not using any dynamic allocation here. It's just, it's just uh, passing the actual stack, copying it from here through the return and passing it to the main, right? So we don't have to really deallocate much of anything aside from this little pointer. So we should get back to that. But first, let's see if it all works. So if I hit uh, a breakpoint here and run this, so you notice that our code is successfully executed and we got like uh, here an, an our stack S is of type stack int as, and as you might have noticed, enums are just uh, aliases for numbers. In our case, stack int is the value zero and size is, this is a in hexadecimal, which is 10. That's correct. That's what we passed in here, right? Uh, data is some pointer and then top is also some pointer. And the first element in data is actually 40, not 64, because we are in hexadecimal. 40 in hexadecimal is four times 16, which is 64 in uh, decimal. Then we have 80, which is 128 in decimal. Okay, I hope that's uh, understandable. Now, one last thing, so this is perfectly working. One last thing I want to create um, is a function that cleans up this stack because notice we have here dynamically allocated memory. We need to free that. Always when you call an malloc, you have to have a free call, no matter what you're doing. So we're gonna have here a function that takes care of that. I'm gonna call it void uh, stack, let's say stack delete or something like that. And we're just gonna take in a stack pointer to our stack here. That's all it needs. And really what we need to do is just say s arrow data and free of this s arrow data. All right, so this is gonna just free this memory out of here. And when we're done, so we're gonna create stack create here and then we can do stack delete s. Or not really s, but the address of s because here we need a pointer and I don't want to pass a copy. I, I mean, you could technically pass a copy, but it's kind of not useful at all. So you, you much rather just pass in a reference that we can then modify here. And like I said, in many videos, you should actually set the pointer. So this S dot data, set it to null so that we know that it's been deallocated. We don't have anything here. So if you, for example, deallocate it again, it's not gonna error out or something, right? We just freed the block of memory that we were pointing to, and now we're not pointing at anything, so just set it to point at nothing and no. Okay. And that's really all there is to it. This really works. It's I think it's very simple, right? You just have to create these functions. It's very much like object-oriented programming in the sense that you create, you have functions that create the uh, data type that you're trying to use, or actually a uh, value for that data type or an instance, uh, and you have functions that delete that data type or, and you have functions that uh, work with that data type. In here, I actually recommend you to uh, try to create a function that does this for you instead. So you don't have to do it like I do it here, but instead sort of, let me give you at least the signature of it. It's something like void stack uh, push, right? And you just sort of, make the operation for pushing an element to it. So it can be something like a probably a void pointer element and something like that. And that should be enough. So we want to push onto this stack of whatever type it may be, this element, this element that can be anything because it's a void pointer. So you're gonna have to check, uh, you're gonna probably have to have an if else that checks which data type we're working with and how it actually works. Uh, yeah, so this is sort of a homework. I would like you to actually do it because it's kind of, it's, I think it's kind of neat. Now really this is the basic way of implementing things. You can go really in depth about uh, generic data types in C, but this is like sort of the basic uh, setup you would like to have in your program, right? And this, I think this works nicely. Okay, if you do have any questions, please do leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you next time. Bye.